So let's continue our exploration of relativistic energy by focusing on this equation. So E, which is the T component of forward momentum, is roughly equal to m plus half mv squared. So we're going to do a little bit of work on that. So here's this equation. And let's see, a reminder, I'll put that over here, I guess, that this is true only if v is much less than 1. All right, so this equation is in SR units, and we've been working in SR units um, just about the entire course. So what that means is, is that v is measured as a fraction of the speed of light. So just as a reminder, v SR is v SI for System International, or just sort of non-SR. Um, right. And you've done this calculation a lot. You're given a speed, Beowulf's going at <clears throat> you know, 300 kilometers per second, and you'd convert and divide by C to get that into SR units. Okay, so a reminder that this is right, SR units. So V is just a number, it's a fraction of the speed of light. So for units here, this is kilograms and this is kilograms. So in SR units, energy is measured in mass units, in kilograms. Sometimes, though, we might want to think about things in terms of um, um, regular units, SI units. So the unit of energy there is the joule. And we can figure out what a joule is by looking at this and assuming we have meters per second here, SI units, metric units, and not these SR units. So M is kilograms. This is meters per second squared. So this is kilograms meters per second squared or kilograms meters squared per second squared. And so if you have um, V in SR units and you want to convert back to SI, you would need to multiply by C, by the speed of light. Um, if, if Beowulf is traveling at 0 0.5, what is that in non-relativistic units? Well, it's the speed of light times 0 0.5. So you multiply by the speed of light. So suppose you wanted to convert this physical equation into SI units, regular units. Well, we would need to multiply this term by um, C squared, and then we'll also have to multiply, you know, to, to be fair to keep the units the same, this term by C squared. Another way to see that is, if we've got something that's in SR units is just kilograms, we're going to need to multiply it by velocity squared in order to get it into joules. So, Here's what we have if we multiply through by c squared. Okay, so v squared here is understood to be in SI units. So this is almost always just written with a v, not with a vsi or anything like that. And then, oh, look what we have here. We've got an mc squared. So that c squared comes from converting back into um, non-relativistic units. And in particular, suppose that the object is at rest, which is, uh, for v, because that's like the smallest v can be, certainly within this limit. If v is at rest, then this term is 0, and we have the famous equation E equals mc squared. And the fuller version, often this is understood to be the rest energy. So what this is telling us is that an object has a certain energy even at rest simply by virtue of having ma mass. And this formula tells us um, exactly how, how much energy that has. You take the mass in kilograms, multiply it by um, c squared. So, um, so here it is. 
This is the uh, most famous formula from special relativity. Some might say it's the most famous formula of all the formulas in the world. Um, and it's taken as a symbol of Einstein's accomplishment, Einstein's genius, um, and a symbol of the field of special relativity as a whole. So we'll come back to this um, in another video two or two and do an example. But for now, let's just bask in the glow of E equals mc squared.